Good afternoon, everyone. I'm joined by the mayor of Rochester, Mayor Malik Evans, directly behind me here. From the FBI, I have Special Agent Jeremy Bell. From ATF, I have Mike Curran. From the Fire Department, I have Chief Stefano Napolitano. We're here to give updates on the West Ridge Road crash from New Year's morning. Sadly, on Wednesday of this week, 54-year-old Dawn Revit of Rochester passed away from her injuries that were sustained when struck by the vehicle. This brings the total number of fatalities in this incident to four, three victims and the suspect. One victim remains in an inpatient treatment facility with non-life-threatening injuries, and I'm happy to report that the rest of those who were injured in this incident have been released from the hospital, including the first responders from AMR. The Rochester Police Department's Major Crimes Unit continues to work with our state, local, and federal partners to help identify exactly what occurred in this horrific tragedy. This investigation has included search warrants on the Wood Spring Suites in Greece, New York, where Avery checked in on December 27th, a storage unit near Syracuse, New York, Avery's vehicle at the Greater Rochester International Airport, as well as electronic related information. Investigators are working through hundreds of hours of surveillance videos, continuing interviews, and seeking additional evidence. At this point in the investigation, law enforcement has been unable to identify the existence of any co-conspirators or any possible motive behind this attack. Investigators have not uncovered any links to political, racial, or any other extremist ideologies associated with Avery. The Major Crimes Unit with our partners from the FBI and ATF are continuing to work towards solving the answer of why. And if anyone else was involved in this horrible tragedy, we will continue to keep the public updated as the investigation moves forward. We are asking anyone <clears throat> that was parked on West Ridge Road in front of the Kodak Theater, and I'll repeat this at the end, or standing outside waiting for a ride between 1245 to 1 a.m. on January 1st, to please reach out to the Major Crimes Unit at majorcrimescityofrochester.gov or by calling 428-7157. In the course of this interview, investigation, interviews have been conducted with a multitude of witnesses and people who knew Avery. It should be noted that his family has been cooperative throughout the investigation. Additionally, the arson task force, which includes members of the Rochester Police Department, Fire Department, and the ATF, have extensively looked at the vehicle that was used in the attack on Kodak Theater. During the investigation, we have found that in the past, Avery has worked as a traveling delivery driver, bringing him to the Rochester area at times. We've also determined that he came to Rochester at least twice in December prior to the attack. After checking into the Wood Spring Suites on the 27th of December, we know he spent the next several days purchasing gas cans and filling them in the Rochester region. We also know that the night before the attack, he spent several hours in the area of the Kodak Theater, potentially scouting the location. Additionally, the night of the attack, he went to the theater and purchased a ticket to the concert, but never used it. Instead, Avery spent time around the theater, including nearby parking lots, until commencing his attack. While searching the vehicle used in the attack, technicians located a Glock-style replica handgun in the armrest and numerous lighters throughout the vehicle. Additionally, searchers have located an approximately 20-page journal that appears to be several years old. While we are continuing to evaluate the writings, they appear to be sporadic over several years and do not appear to contain any writings directly related to the incident on Westridge Road. So and again, one more time, it's at the end of the written release as well. We are asking from the public, anyone that was parked on Westridge Road in front of the Kodak Theater or standing outside waiting for a ride that night, please reach out to the Major Crimes Unit majorcrimescityofrochester.gov or call 428-7157. This time I'd like to introduce the mayor and then we will come back for some questions.
Thank you, Chief, and let me again thank our first responders who dealt with this dastardly tragedy on New Year's Day. But I want to remind all of us that we must keep those that are still recovering in our prayers, and I also want to continue to mourn the passing and pray for the families of Don Revit, Justina Hughes, and Josh, and Josh Orr, who lost their lives as a result of this tragedy. Although we are still asking questions as to why uh, this individual decided to carry out this deadly attack, um, I think that we can say, just from what the chief said, that he knew what he was doing. This was planned, no question. And we are blessed that more loss, more loss of life did not take place. More lives could have been lost. And as I've said to the families of two of the victims that I've had the opportunity to speak to, they may have prevented a worse of a tragedy that could have happened. We may never know why he decided to carry out this act. But what we should do is try to keep the memories of Don, Justina, and Josh alive. They were there on New Year's Day to bring in the new year, to celebrate in a time that was supposed to be happy turned into this, this tragedy. So while we want to continue to try to get to the bottom of this, I think that that is important. While we may never know why, I think that we can't let this, this individual and this sick act that he perpetrated in our city, because this was an assault on Rochester, period. It was assault on innocent people. And it's obvious from his actions that he wanted to do more. But we should keep Don, Justina, and Josh as we think about this tragedy, their families and their memories and our um, thoughts and prayers and how we carry on um, as we recover from this tragedy. I just want to reiterate what the chief said. Anyone with information that may have been outside, may have been waiting for a ride, get in touch with major crimes. We are learning in these things. No piece of information is too small or too insignificant. If you have information, please put that out there. And again, my thoughts are with the families. And again, I want to thank the first responders um, that responded to this awful tragedy to start the new year. This is not the way um, we hope to start, it, start the new year in Rochester. But I think we have the opportunity to keep the memories of the folks that lost their lives alive and to thank the first responders who responded to this tragedy. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor. Questions? None. It's uh, Mr. Avery knows, and so far we haven't been able to find anyone else who does. I'm sorry to interrupt you before, but where was Don Revit in all this? Was she a bystander? How was she hit? What was she a <clears throat> uh, I believe she was one of the pedestrians in the crosswalk. Was she directly by the police car? Or that I, 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 I don't know. I could find out. I think that Uber car saved the lives of a lot of other people that were in the lobby of that building, yes. Can you tell that Mr. Avery had been here twice before? Uh, due to various jobs he had in the past, he had a familiarity with Rochester, he would travel here. We know of at least two times in December, definitely, when he was here. How do you prevent something like this? Well, you know, it, it sounds uh, trite, but see something, say something. Um, 
you said there's, uh, again, here's a man who's driving around an SUV with multiple, multiple gas cans. I'm not saying anyone did notice that, but again, that's something that, you know, if I were at a gas station and I happen to see some of that, I might want to try and get the plate number and call someone or let, let someone know. Um, you know, don't, don't be afraid. We know he was in the area. He was loitering around. You know, again, if you see someone that looks out of place in your neighborhood, you see something that just doesn't feel right, don't be afraid to call 911. It's better we go and check it out than have a tragedy like this. Um, no, nothing, nothing the past few weeks before this incident, to my, as far as I'm aware of. He's had behavioral issues in the past. Um, as we've said before, he's had, you know, behavioral difficulties. Um, the family hadn't seen any immediately, immediate red flags in December. Um, I know the major crimes unit in the mayor's office has kept in contact with all of the, the victims' families on this case. All right, thank you, everyone. Yep. Uh, I think it's an imitation. It's a replica, not a real gun. Okay, thank you, everyone. Thank you.